I feel responsible to leave a record behind. I'm going to be gone someday. These old buildings and ghost towns are going to be gone someday. So it is my genuine hope that what I've been doing over all these years uh, will uh, survive for centuries. I'm a retired physician, native to Helena, Montana. I've been practicing medicine for 37 years. Just retired five years ago. 47 years I've been photographing ghost towns and homesteads of Montana. I was passionate about medicine, but I'm also passionate about photography. My earliest remembrances of growing up as a child in Helena was ghost towning with my parents when I was a little shaver. One of the beauties of Montana, there's just a million people in the entire state. And so a lot of these places that I visit are essentially untouched. You still find artifacts from the previous residence before it was abandoned. I will set out to a new mining camp, a new ghost town, with no preconceived notion of what I'm going to find there. Usually I find nothing that I haven't seen before. But every once in a while, I'll completely stumble upon something that makes for a wonderful photograph. Bought everything, cameras, lenses, uh, darkroom equipment in 1971. It all works well, there's no reason to change. When I'm in a real dark interior, like a dark barn, where I have some trouble seeing my f-stops and my shutter speeds, I've been doing this for so long with the same equipment, I know where everything is, and it really is just an extension of my arm. When you have to do all of that manually, it makes for a more focused, if you will, experience when you have to think what your exposure is, what you think the uh, composition is going to be. What I do is requires patience because an average amount of time it takes me to take one picture is on the order of an hour or two. I normally just expose 15 to 20 negatives per year. So I do a lot of looking for something that might have some compositional interest, you might say. My darkroom weekly about middle to late November, and I'm busy with those 15 or 20 until about mid-March. And then I wrap up my darkroom, and I head back to the mountains uh, at that point. And so I have two seasons. I have the shooting season, and I have the darkroom season. <laughs> well, I've got five books of my photography that have been published. The first one is 1997. Uh, the last one, was 2017, just last year. Last several years, my lens has been trained more on artifacts. Because I'm largely doing close-up work, abstract work now, it brings more personality into an old building. So if you find an old bottle or an old can and then you get a successful picture from that, oftentimes the viewer might feel the same sense of that belonged to a person at one point in time. It brings, makes it more personal, if you would. 
Uh, and that's uh, important to me, and I hope uh, viewers can relate to that as well. I'm doing a sub-series on doll heads. They might have fingers missing, they might have an entire arm missing, there is dirt, there are scratches on the face as well. And to my eye, those really make for an in, uh, engaging composition. But uh, other people, my wife included, <laughs> does not respond to that, let's put it that way. <laughs> It's hard to not feel the presence of people who were here. Uh, and there have been at least two occasions when all my equipment set up, I was concentrating. When I could have sworn there was somebody behind me. It was kind of alarming, actually. So I quickly turned around to see who was behind me, and there was nobody there visible. But I've often wondered. Maybe the occupants was right there with me as I was filming. I'm 73. I notice I'm not as spry as I used to be when I'm climbing mountains. I'm a little stiffer than I used to be. As long as I physically can, I'm just going to keep doing so. Got the 50th anniversary coming up, hopefully, for another 20 years after that. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs>